bleeding, what would you do? When a first aider must control bleeding because of a break or leak in the circulatory system, he should know something about how the system functions. The heart is divided into four parts or chambers. The blood enters the upper right chamber from a large vein in the body. From there it flows to the lower right chamber and is pumped through the lungs where it picks up oxygen and gives off carbon dioxide. From the lungs, the oxygenated blood flows to the upper left chamber, then down to the lower left chamber where a powerful thrust sends it on its way through the body again. There is constant pressure in the arteries which carry blood from the heart. To control bleeding, go directly to the wound and press firmly on it. Direct pressure on the wound will control the bleeding quickly. From the arteries, the blood flow is divided and subdivided right down to minute channels or capillaries. Even rubbing the skin slightly against a rough surface may cause bleeding. Small wounds and cuts may be treated by applying an adhesive compress. This should provide sufficient pressure to stop slight bleeding. A cut artery is dangerous. Quick action must be taken or there will be a great loss of blood. Pressing on the artery, as well as on the wound itself, will aid in the control of bleeding. This large arm artery is called the brachial artery. To reach it, bring your hand in from behind and apply pressure on the inner side of the arm at this point. With the other hand, apply a compress over the wound. Continue to pile compresses, one on top of the other, applying pressure all of the while until the bleeding stops. The femoral artery supplies blood to the entire lower extremity. Apply pressure over the pelvic bone for a cut in the thigh. This helps prevent blood from going through the main supply vessel. Again, apply compresses to the wound until the bleeding stops. When arteries are completely severed and severe life-threatening hemorrhage occurs, which cannot be controlled by other means, a tourniquet may be necessary. An improvised tourniquet can be made from any piece of sturdy cloth, which is two inches or more in width and long enough to go around the part. If possible, wrap the cloth around the part twice, then tie a half knot. Place a stout stick over the half knot and complete the knot, tying the stick in. You must have a strong piece of wood. A pencil or pen will not do. Twist the stick until the bleeding stops and hold it in place either by hand or with another bandage. Get medical aid. To stop bleeding, remember this. Use direct pressure on the wound itself. would you do? First, check the poison container for an antidote. If no instructions are found, 
Generally, the first thing to do is to dilute the poison by giving fluids. Use either water or milk. Then induce vomiting. Do not use detergents or soaps. A baking soda solution is nauseating and may be given consistently to induce vomiting. A universal antidote for poisoning can be bought and stored in the house or shop. In the event you do not have a store-bought solution, the following ingredients make a good universal antidote. Two parts burned toast. One part strong tea. One part milk of magnesia. You may have to dilute this mixture with water. When old prescribed medicines have served their purpose, pour them down the sink. Keep them out of the reach of children. One out of three of the under 14-year-old accidental deaths is caused by poisoning. Fracture is a break in the bone. There are two principal kinds, simple and compound. In a simple fracture, a wound extending through the skin is not present. In a compound fracture, however, it is. Keep the broken ends quiet, as well as the joint above and below the break. Any materials may be used to prevent motion. Well padded rigid materials such as boards, heavy magazines, and so forth. If the fracture is at or near a joint, immobilize the extremity in the position in which it is found. Dislocation is the displacement of a bone end from the joint. The surrounding tissue may suffer some injury. Dislocations are handled like fractures. The part should be kept quiet. Medical attention should be obtained. Do not attempt to reduce dislocation. When one leg is broken, the sound limb may be used as a splint. A blanket or other material should be used for padding between the extremities. It is best not to move an accident victim until his injuries are known. If it is absolutely necessary to move the victim to avoid additional injury, this should be done with care. The pull should be on the long axis of the body. If there is injury to the upper part of the body, pull him by the armpits. If a blanket is available, it can be used in this manner. Finally, if the upper part of the body is inaccessible, merely pull him as shown. This is the first step in getting the victim in position to be moved using three people. This man supports the head and shoulders. The first aiders make sure of their hand positions before they actually lift the patient. The man on the right lifts the chest and part of the lower trunk. The third man lifts the buttocks and the lower extremities. Once the victim is raised to their knees, they interlock their hands at the wrists to provide a firm grip. This method can be used on practically any terrain. Here is the first step in getting a blanket under a victim with the least amount of motion. The folded blanket is placed at the victim's head with three men holding the upper part of the body in place. The other two men grasp the bottom pleat of the blanket and pull it under the victim. The blanket is then rolled tightly against the victim's body. This supplies a good grip or handle for the next move. The bearers merely lean backwards, causing the blanket to become a temporary stretcher. The victim is now raised sufficiently to slide a litter underneath.
To help prevent shock, keep the victim warm. Cover him with the blanket. The bearers now change positions prior to lifting the stretcher. The command lift is given and the stretcher raised. The two side bearers take the weight, allowing the end man to turn around and face the same direction as the man ahead. The men at the head and feet support the weight as the two side bearers switch hands. The man at the head starts off with his right foot, the others with their left. It is important to move slowly and carefully. Fainting, a common emergency. What would you do? Should the victim have already fainted, the first aider should assist in raising the lower part of the body. Every unconscious victim should be checked by a physician. Reassure the victim and keep him comfortable. If a person feels faint and it is not feasible for the person to lie down, get the head lower than the heart. Epileptic seizures, what would you do? The main duty of the first aider is to protect the epileptic against doing injury to himself. There is a possibility of the victim biting his tongue. Protect him against doing injury to himself, but do not restrain him. If the emergency is a heart attack, the first aider's prime responsibility is to get medical attention. Phone the ambulance. For those suffering from heart attacks where shortness of breath is a major symptom, raise the head and chest until the victim is comfortable. Some heart cases have to sit upright in order to breathe. Occasionally the victim will have a history of heart trouble and may be carrying medication. Ask if he is carrying his own medication and help him take it. In other cases, the lying down position is best. If a victim is discovered in an unconscious state and breathing is inadequate or stopped, administer artificial respiration. <laughs> 